Well, welcome to my studio. Today I'm working on a blue bonnet painting, a Texas Hill Country Springtime. And I have sketched the composition up on my canvas. I showed you the complete uh, canvas at the very beginning. I've sketched it up with a mixture. This is mixtures of my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson and that's mixed with liquid to make a thin wash that I sketch everything up with. The blue on my roof with the flag, this is ultramarine blue plus liquid. This is alizarin crimson plus liquid. I sketch it up there, I let it dry overnight so my sketch is, is dry. And so that way if I paint over it or whatever I can just go back and erase it. And the way I erase it is I just take a little tissue, dip it in clean thinner, and, and I can wipe the paint off of that. Or I can even scrape it off. And I can do that with a brush too. But we're going to get started. I showed you my paint mixtures. This is a mixture of cobalt blue plus white. And I'm painting this in the gallery wrap style. So I'm painting actually on the edges of this canvas. And so it, but I just, and this is, I'm not going to worry about doing all the edges right now, but this just this is my first initial. The sky is the cobalt blue plus white, and the sky is darker as it goes up overhead and gets lighter as it comes down. Now the sun is coming in from the left, so I'm going to have the right side of my sky just a little bit darker. And I do my brush strokes kind of in a crisscross fashion so that that covers the canvas. It fills in all those little texture holes and everything. I'm going to be careful around my windmill because I don't want to go over that, cover up my sketch too much. But if I do, let's just say I did, I can go back and with a clean brush dipped in thinner, I wipe it out, then I can go back and just lift that up. And that's the advantage of having this sketch washed in with the oil wash because I can come back and, and do that. Now this mixture is a little bit lighter, has more white. Again, that's cobalt blue plus white. I'm doing my darker at the very top. want to be, you want to really make sure you get the canvas covered. You don't want any of those little white specks in there where the paint hasn't filled in the texture of the canvas. So you can see with a, a large brush I can, I can cover quite a bit in area. I used to work with larger brushes than this, but over the years it, it, it started to take its toll on my wrist and my elbow. So now I don't work with quite as big of brushes. And again, you can see how I work around the edge of the canvas. And I'll come back and, and make sure that's totally covered. But for right now I want to show you how I get the sky locked in here. My canvas is mounted on cardboard. If you will go to my blog, I show how I did that. And when I paint the painting in the gallery wrap style, the edges are all painted, so they're wet. So it would be really difficult to handle the wet painting if I didn't mount it on a backing. So I mount it on a cardboard backing. And that cardboard sticks out about, oh, I guess on a couple of sides it's probably four inches and on a couple the other side it's two to three inches. It, the, the canvas is basically centered on that big piece of cardboard. And again, I show you in my blog how I did that and the link is in the description below. And this is a very easy way to make it easy to handle the, the wet painting. You can do this even on a, a conventional standard can, uh, stretcher bars if you want to, to do that just makes it easier to handle. 
Now this is a mixture of white plus thalo blue. A little bit lighter. And as the sky comes toward the earth, it gets a little greener. The blue has a little more yellow in it. It's the re warmth reflecting from the earth. And so that's, so here I'm using, this is thalo blue plus white. Couple little scummies in my paint. Every once in a while, uh, sometimes I get a mix of, of white paint that just has a few little scummies in there. You have to scrape them off with your knife and come back and clean that out. Now here's my mountains here. So we're lighter at the horizon. And actually I'm going to be painting my clouds even over this, but I have some places where that blue will be showing through. I just paint around my sketch. I'm only going to continue this to here. not going to paint right at the windmill right this this moment. Just going to paint up to it. I want to show you how I get my clouds in there. So I just work, I just kind of paint around that. I have plenty of color mixed so I can come back and, and do my windmill. They love blue in here. And I just let that color feather up into the, I want a smooth transition between the blues. There's another one of those little scuzzies. Before I feather my paint, what I'm gonna do is clean out my brush, wipe it real good. Make sure it's dry. You don't want to you don't want to have thinner in your brush when you do this because it it's too wet. So this just smooths that transition, and it also makes sure that that all the little the texture in the canvas is filled in. Now it's a spring day, just a pretty spring day, and they're just going to be soft, little feathery clouds along the horizon. And then as you go up, the sky is going to be good, just beautiful blue spring sky. So now I begin, this is a mixture of my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue plus white. This gives me a soft little purple that I'm just going to bring along the, the mountain here. I went ahead and painted my blue in there because I want that those colors to kind of intermingle a little bit. Let's just add some more warmth in, along here, along the bottom of the sky there near the horizon. Now this is a mixture of white plus cadmium orange plus a little bit of my mud. And this will be the sunlit portion of the clouds. I just gently bring that color over the over the blue. Because I want these to just be really soft and feathery. Just lazy, lazy little soft clouds. I suppose Bob Ross would call these heavy clouds. 
Happy climax. And what I can do now is some of my brush strokes up here, I don't particularly like the, the edges right in here. So I can take my darker, or my cobalt blue plus white, and I can pull this color down into the cloud. Now I have to wipe my brush in between each time because I don't want that white, that lighter color to go back up in the blue. But I can just bring my darker sky color down into the cloud and that softens that edge. I have to go back and kind of. And I can even do that over here with the phthalo blue. This part of the sky is going to be more of the phthalo blue. It's going to be lighter because the sun is coming in from that direction. And I paint the sky first in my paintings because the color of the sky, the light in the sky, influences the entire painting. If it's a sunset sky, the painting, the body of the painting is going to look a little different than if it's a bright sunny day, uh, if it's early morning, it's going to be cooler light. So the sky provides the light. So therefore, I paint the sky first. We just want these clouds to be very soft. some of the darker cobalt blue plus white into that. It's a moving back and forth. You just work back and forth. Jack always called that pushing and pulling. But that's, that's how I paint the sky. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. I do hope you'll visit my blog because I do show the step-by-step -step process of the entire painting. And just go to the link below. I know sometimes people will email me in the YouTube comment section and say, well, I want to see how the rest of this painting you know, goes. And just go to my blog and I'll show the complete, complete painting there. So I thank you again. And you just have a wonderful, wonderful day. And happy painting.